The state of Rhode Island is tackling the rent crisis through a new $10 million private program that will use COVID-19 stimulus money to build mixed income public housing. As reported by Ricardo Gomez in The Lever, the pilot program is just one part of the state's Create Homes Act, which would use $300 million of American Rescue Plan Act funds to create a new state housing department, realigning public spending with the public good. Joining us now to expand on that is fellow at The Lever, Ricardo Gomez. Welcome to Rising. Hi, thank you for having me. Ricardo, help us understand what the experience of the housing crisis is right now, more broadly, but specifically in Rhode Island. What are renters uh, up against? Well, um, the situation in Rhode Island is, is much like many places. Um, rents are on the rise and there's not a whole lot of relief. Um, this is for a number of reasons, which is um, A, that the, any new housing units that are being built are, are being built at um, market rate. Uh, landlords are increasing uh, prices uh, without consultation. Um, a response is there's been um, a rise in tenant rights organizing, tenant unionization, but at the same time, um, landlords in Rhode Island have also been forming um, basically lobbying groups to sort of combat that, combat those efforts. Um, yeah, this this is, um, I don't know, I, I think I, I would say that this is a very similar experience uh, that people are facing in a lot of different places. All right, well, how does, uh, how does creating a new housing department help alleviate this problem? Well, so uh, over the last couple of decades, the primary program for building affordable housing has been the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, uh, which largely gives private developers um, tax, tax credits. So it incentivizes housing developers um, um, who are seeking profits to build housing. What, um, what the public developer program would do is equip the state um, to, to take over land planning, land acquisition, and the actual building of housing units. Um, this would mean that the way that we're organizing collectively to build housing is, is not motivated by um, profits or by private developers seeking to get public resources, um, but instead is, is for the goal of simply creating housing. So. Um, Creating this um, public developer program, um, getting it off the ground through the pilot program is a step of creating like one coordinated uh, system of uh, creating housing for the public that isn't motivated or driven by profits, but um, for addressing a very basic need, which is the need for, for housing. Well, can you help me understand why it is that the federal uh, housing program, the LIHC, the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program, is so susceptible to these uh, private developer interests, but ha the state level program won't be? Yeah, well, I would say with the LIHTCs, there's a fundamental misalignment of public spending and public good. I mentioned that in my piece. Um, basically, there's very little oversight of, of these actors. Um, the housing that they do build, which is supposed to be affordable, is um, has like expires um, like over 30 years. Uh, any affordable housing that they build will will basically convert back into market housing. Um, the the difference is that under a, a public developer model, um, the housing won't have expirability. Uh, affordability will be um, you know, there will be more oversight about what, what is actually considered affordable will be geared towards workforce housing. Um, by, by definition, like the LIHTC program is set out to incentivize people who are looking for profits, right? The, the public developer program is, is sort of made more democratic by allowing um, a public uh, entity, which, you know, is, is is subject to the interests of, of people um, to oversee the building of, of the housing rather than letting um, private actors um, regulate things and drive things. It seems kind of wild that this federal program would have these obvious flaws in it. If expirability is the issue, why is that the, why is that 
the case. If there are not the right incentives and conditions put on building that are actually motivating more low-income housing to be built as opposed to the for-profit, higher-income, more profitable housing, why is not that not built in the federal program? You know, is it lobbying interest? Is it, you know, what, 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 has there not been a lot of public scrutiny about uh, the, the LIHTC uh, model? Yeah, maybe. I mean, definitely public scrutiny, but also there are a lot of mon there are a lot of people getting a lot of money from um, this program. Uh, you know, there were investigations done recently that saw that uh, the the program is rife with corruption. People take money that is supposedly going to be going to uh, developing housing and will spend it on on dinners with clients. Um, the, the the whole program um, when when you have a program that is oriented around uh, letting private actors who are seeking profits determine something as basic as housing like there are just some fundamental problems there and you know this goes back to in the 30s and 40s when the federal government was initially expanding things like the the uh, like HUD uh, building public housing. Um, that shifted in the 70s and the, in the neoliberal period to giving um, more control over housing to these private uh, private actors building the housing. So I don't know that shift is really important. Um, the lack of oversight is really important, but also just like the fundamental um, alignment of interests, which is they're seeking profits, not housing. I don't know that that I don't know about the situation in Rhode Island specifically, but in other places where there is not enough housing, a large or affordable housing, a large contributor to that problem is just that there's not enough housing in general, often because of zoning, local uh, local actors who who oppose new development, regardless of you know what if it's going to be affordable or not. Uh, an expansion of the housing supply would drive down uh, prices, even if even if the new developments aren't specifically designated for affordable housing. Sometimes some aspect of them are affordable. Um, is there any? Is there? I, I, Rhode Island's a very small state. At the local level, are there are there you know zoning actors and uh, histor you know historical preservation boards that kind of thing standing in the way of having more housing? Well, um, something to respond to this, I, I think an important part of of breaking down the public developer uh, model is that it would it would let the state or at the municipal level to um, to sort of coordinate the zoning laws that you're talking about. Um, there, there are a lot of like the, the developers have a lot of um, interest in making sure that those zoning laws aren't designated to actually building affordable housing. Um, in Rhode Island, in particular, uh, as people have been, as tenants have been organizing against rent spikes, against evictions, as I was saying earlier, um, different groups from mom and pop landlords to bigger developers. Um, also coordinate um, their lobbying interests to sort of prevent the the changing of of these zoning laws. Um, I guess I would focus on 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 talking about how the public developer program um, allows un all of these sorts of, of rules to be brought under the purview of, of one public entity. So under the the public developer, there would be tools for the state or um, to review, for example, zoning and uh, say vacancies of, of properties, um, and either require uh, places to um, provide a plan for the usage of this land or to put the land up for sale to uh, the state of Rhode Island. Um, so there's a sort of um, a mechanism there or tools to sort of address this this question that you're bringing up about um, zoning or about uh, where affordable housing can be built um, and it's sort of all folded in into what the public public developer program uh, would do which is to sort of uh, to efficiently build housing um, and taking taking control or at least having more say in the matter of, of zoning is a big step to that in addition, having a, a public developer, having the government uh, step in uh, would mean that uh, the government wouldn't necessarily be held hostage to public developers who are uh, refraining from, from investing in, in building housing. Um, they, can, they can step in and, and uh, sort of drive that process.
I, I'm seeing the claim that Rhode Island has be, uh, produced the least new housing supply per capita of any state in the country. Hmm. Seems like a substantial part of the problem. Uh, Ricardo Gomez, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll have more rising right after this.